So the sketch uh, can also be used. This new solver can be used with imported geometry as well. Using existing geometry with the new sketch solver. The sketch solver works with imported or legacy geometry just as if that geometry was created in your NX session. Uh, for example, users can easily import geometry from DXF files to quickly add to sketches and utilize in a design. So in this demonstration below, which I'm going to go ahead and do now, uh, we're going to take a DXF file of this brake rotor here. We're going to import that into our NX session. And then we're going to go ahead and create a sketch from that imported geometry and make a few changes to it with the new sketch solver and user interface. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this sketch here on this part. And I'm going to come over to this uh, other part that I already had open, this Model 2. And I want to go ahead and import some geometry into my Model 2 file here. So I'm going to go to File, Import. And I'm going to go down to the AutoCAD DXF option here. I need to navigate out and find my DXF file. So I do have a break disk 01 DXF file here. So I'm going to select that and hit OK. Once I select that, I do want to ensure I have a couple settings uh, set here. So I want to ensure that it's going to be imported to my work part, which is my current part. That is the work part in my session here. My options, I want to make sure I'm sending this uh, with the workflow to 3D as opposed to drawing because I want those, com uh, those curves to be imported into the 3D environment here in NX. Now, once I've done that, I can hit a quick preview down, see what that uh, DXF file looks like, what that's going to look like when it gets imported into my NX session here. And once I'm happy with that, I'll just hit the finish option here. So the importer is working and it did import the 2D geometry from that DXF file for me here. So now that I have my imported geometry from my DXF file, what I'm going to do now is create a new sketch. And that default plane is fine, so I'm going to hit OK here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to close the profile creation uh, option here. And I want to import or add the sketch curves or these DXF curves that we imported into my sketch here. So I'm going to go into the More dropdown and choose the Add Curves option here. So the Add Curves is going to allow you to select a series of curves. I'm just going to box around the imported uh, rotor curves here and then select OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and orient my view. I can use my triad down below. So I'm going to pick this front face, orient that normal to my sketch view. And now you can see all those curves have been imported into my sketch. If I double click or click on this uh, outside diameter, you can see it's immediately recognized as a diameter. And I can modify that diameter value just by typing in a new value in the dialog box here. So let's go ahead and make this 390. And I do want to ensure that that was, uh, let me go back and undo that real quick. And it is uh, going to be controlled by the center point at the origin point of my sketch. So that's why I'm going to double check. So I'm going to change this to 390. So we can increase the, side, the outside diameter of that rotor. And we can also uh, go ahead and select some of these holes inside of our rotor here. If we want to modify some of those diameters on those holes. Once I select one of these diameters, or these holes, let's see here if I can add a dimension. And I do want to double check, make sure I added these. Okay, so there's one of those holes. I don't know why it wasn't working previously, but it worked this time. So I selected this one hole here. You will notice there's an equal radius relation that was found amongst all these holes. So the solver automatically figured out that all these holes had the same diameter and it created an equal relationship between an equal radius relation between all of those holes. So if I go ahead and modify this value of eight, double click that and then type in seven here, you can see all those hole sizes have changed immediately for me. So because the solver figured out that all those holes were the same size, it uh, created that equal radius relation, and I was able to control all the sizes or the diameters on all those holes with one dimension here. So I can come in here now and modify the diameter on the internal here, this ID. So I'm just going to quickly change that uh, dimension here. 
And let's go ahead and type in 90 on that. And immediately you can see the relations that were created in uh, relation to that center diameter there. And immediately all the geometry around it updated when I reduced the size of that hole. So now we have our changes we made to this part. I can go ahead and hit finish. And we have a true NX sketch that was created from some imported uh, DXF geometry, just like that. So if I want to go ahead and revolve this or uh, extrude it in this case, I would extrude this sketch. And I can quickly hit OK. And now from that imported geometry, I have a sketch, a parametric sketch that is driving my uh, extrude feature at this point. So that is importing a DXF file, utilizing the DXF geometry, creating a new sketch, adding those sketch curves or those DXF curves to the sketch. Uh, creating some parametric controls or dimensions, and then extruding to create our disk here for our disk break.